Today's class is on uh, anatomy of the larynx. Larynx is the organ for production of voice. Otherwise, we call it a voice box. It is also a passage for air from the throat into the trachea. The larynx extends from the root of the tongue to the trachea, that is from the C3 to C6 vertebrae. Size varies from 44 in males to 36 in females. The growth of the larynx is maximum at puberty, especially in males. You know that there is a sudden change in the clarity of the voice, especially in males during puberty. Coming to the components or constitution of the larynx, it has got a framework of cartilages connected by joints, ligaments and membranes and this is moved by muscles. The cartilages are classified into unpaired and paired cartilages. Unpaired cartilages are the thyroid, cricoid and the epiglottis and the paired are the arytenoid, corniculate and cuneiform. This is the anterior view of the larynx and this is the lateral view. You can see this is the thyroid cartilage, largest of all that and here is the thyroid cartilage up till here. It is connected to the hyoid bone here I'll tell you. And this is the epiglottis and this is the cricoid cartilage. From here downwards you can see the tracheal rings. These are the tracheal rings. So this is cricoid, thyroid and the epiglottis. And this is the lateral view. You can see the thyroid cartilage. This part of the thyroid cartilage is called lamina. And here is the upper border. And here is the corno. I'll tell you the details later. And this is the hyoid bone. And from the posterior aspect of the hyoid bone, you can see the epiglottis projecting upwards. This is the posterior view. You can see the thyroid cartilage is open posteriorly. This is the epiglottis. This is the cricoid. And this is the arytenoid cartilage and here is the coronal section through the larynx where you can see the one lamina of the thyroid cartilage. Here is the epiglottis and you can see the epiglottis apex is connected to the thyroid cartilage on its posterior aspect of the angle. And here is the arytenoid cartilage sitting on top of the posterior part of the cricoid. And here is the corniculate and there is one more above that that is called cuneiform. Coming to the details of the thyroid cartilage, it is shield shaped and open posteriorly and it has got an angle where the two lamina fuse and the angle is around 90 degrees in males and about 120 degrees in females. And the angle that is the, the the junction between the two lamina has got a prominence or it bulges out and it is more prominent in the fem in the males and this area is called Adam's apple. The function of the thyroid cartridge is to protect the larynx and also give attachment to the vocal cords. And at the junction of the two lamina you can see a small notch that is called the thyroid notch. The posterior border, if you see, it has got an elevation or an extension upwards and downwards. These are called the superior and inferior cornum or horns. The superior horn is connected to the hyoid bone by a ligament which is called a thyrohyoid ligament. And the inferior horn is connected or it forms a joint with the cricoid and it is called a cricothyroid joint here. And on the lamina lateral aspect, one line is there which is important because it gives attachment to three muscles. One is the sternothyroid which starts from below and comes here that is called sternothyroid. And from here to the hyoid there is sternohyoid. And on the aspect here going backwards there is inferior constrictor of pharynx. And here in the upper border you can see it is connected to the hyoid bone by the thyrohyoid membrane and here below the thyroid is connected to the cricoid by the cricothyroid membrane 
the middle middle median portion of this cricothyroid membrane is thicker and it is called conus elasticus the cricoid cartilage is like a ring signet ring which has got an anterior uh, arch and a posterior arch the anterior arch here is quite smaller or narrower compared to the posterior arch here you see how the height of the posterior arch it is quite broad and on the lateral aspect you can see the facet for the inferior corner of the thyroid cartilage the lower border of the thyroid cartilage gives origin to a muscle which is called cricothyroid muscle you can see it goes downwards and forwards and it is attached to the anterior portion of the cricoid cartilage the cricoid cartilage has got certain specialities it forms the landmark you know for the lower border of the larynx which continues as the trachea and the lower border of the pharynx where it continues as the esophagus it gives uh, support to the arytenoid and it gives attachment to cricothyroid muscle that is the only cartilage which forms a 360 degree ring and once injured it is very difficult to treat uh, without giving any without uh, you know uh, to completely uh, very difficult to cure a lesion of the cricoid cartilage epiglottis is a leaf shaped elastic cartilage it is situated in the midline it has got upper free border broader area and a lower tapering area the, this is a free border this is an attached border the lower part is attached to the thyroid cartilage by a thyroepiglottic ligament the margins of the this is the margin of the thyroid the epiglottis is connected to the arytenoid this is the here is the arytenoid it is like this there is a there is a fold of mucosa and that is called array epiglottic fold array epiglottic fold both sides you can see array epiglottic fold inside that there is a muscle which is called array epiglotticus muscle anteriorly anteriorly the epiglottis is connected to the hyoid bone i'll show, I'll show you one more diagram later it is connected to the hyoid bone in front by the hyoepiglottic ligament and here is the diagram you can see that the epiglottis is projecting above the posterior aspect and the tongue is connected to the epiglottis by three ligaments one median and two lateral glosso epiglottic ligament the arachnoids if you see they are paired cartilages they are sitting on top of the posterior part of the cricoid cartilage it is pyramidal in shape you can see it all pyramidal in shape it has got an apex which is upwards and a base which is sitting on the cricoid cartilage and the there are two processes you can see one process here it is projecting anteriorly one process projecting laterally this is called the vocal process and this is called the muscular process the vocal process will give attachment to the vocalis ligament vocal ligament and the vocalis muscle and the muscular process will give attach the, this is the one muscle which is going from the posterior aspect this is called posterior cricoarytenoid and lateral cricoarytenoid these are the two muscles which are attached to the muscular process and the posterior surface of this is the posterior surface this is the posterior surface of the cricoid here this is the arytenoid and there are two muscles you can see one muscle which is going horizontally this one is called transverse arytenoid and you can see one more muscle which is going obliquely like this this is the one that will go like obliquely from one arytenoid to the opposite arytenoid that is from the base of one arytenoid to the apex of the opposite arytenoid they are called oblique arytenoids so again one more we have four muscles to learn here one is the posterior cricoarytenoid lateral cricoarytenoid the transverse arytenoid and the oblique arytenoid the corniculate and cuneiform cartilages are like this the corniculate is here it is a small conical nodule it articulate with the apex of the arytenoid cartilage and it is located this is the array epiglottic fold the epiglottis the array epiglottic fold inside that both these are there and uh, 
The cuneiform is a small rod shaped one located inside again in the aeropiclotic fold and it articulates with the corniculate cartilage. Coming to the ligaments and membranes, we have already have told you about the thyrohyoid ligament connecting the upper border of the thyroid cartilage to the, the hyoid bone and here is the hyoepiglottic ligament see from the anterior part of the hyoepiglottis to the hyoid there is this hyoepiglottic ligament then cricotracheal ligament is the one which is connecting the cricoid to the trachea and there is a quadrate ligament this if you see from here this this area is the interior of the larynx there is two folds inside one fold in the upper part one fold this is called vestibular fold and this is called vocal fold from here upwards towards the aeropiglottic fold and the epiglottis we have a membrane and that is called quadrate membrane and here downwards we have one going from the vocal ligament or vocal fold downwards it is called cricovocal membrane this was i was telling the conus elasticus the thicker anterior portion Coming to the interior of the larynx, if you see from the, the, in the top, that is if you put a laryngoscope and see how it looks, you can see this is the epiglottis, this is the anterior portion, this is the posterior portion and you can see one fold here, this is the whitish the fold which is seen below and here above there is a pinkish fold, this whitish fold is the vocal fold and above this one is called the vestibular fold and posteriorly you can see this is the array epiglottic fold and here is the erectoid cartilage and here in this will be the cuneiform and the corniculate cartilages inside this so this is the opening of the vocal vocal uh, opening between the vocal cords and i'll tell you the details of it later and here if you see this is the sagittal section through the uh, larynx you can see the epiglottis and here is the two folds one fold above one fold below this is the vestibular fold and this is the vocal fold and you can see the because of these two folds the larynx is divided into three portions this portion is the vestibule and this portion between the two folds is called the sinus and this portion is called the infraglottic compartment this is the one more this is this is the three areas which i have told you supraglottic compartment otherwise called ventricle or vestibule and in between the two folds here this area is called sinus and this area is called infraglottic compartments and these three areas are divided by two folds vestibular fold and the vocal fold the supraglottic compartment consists of the ventricles or the vestibule and the vestibular fold and the laryngeal surface of the epiglottis this is the laryngeal surface of the epiglottis and on the sides we have the array epiglottic folds the posterior tapering shape reduces size see when you go downwards and backwards i'll show the interior later the the, the posterior portion becomes narrow compared to the array anterior portion the second portion is called the sinus this is the sinus you can see the sinus here okay this is the supraglottic compartment otherwise called vestibule or ventricle this is the portion which is called infraglottic compartment and laterally if you see it might have an extension towards the sides and that extension is called saccule and inside that there are a huge lot of uh, mucus glands which are there to lubricate the vocal cords. So the saccule is otherwise called the oil can of larynx. The glottis is the area between the two uh, vocal cords or true cords, vestibular folds are 
otherwise called false chords. Here is the junction between the anterior area and posterior. This is called the anterior commissure and this is called the posterior commissure. The, if you see the, the interval between the two vocal folds, this area is divided into two areas, one between the arachnoid and one between the two vocal folds. This is called the intra or membranous part and this is called the cartilaginous part. So anterior two-third is membranous and posterior one-third is cartilaginous in between the two arachnoid cartilages. And this area between the membranous part and the, uh, the cartilaginous part is called rima glottidis. Rima glottidis is the space between the two vocal fold that is the membranous part and the cartilaginous part. The vocal cord or the vocal fold usually we call vocal fold sometimes for uh, for easy explanation we might tell it as vocal cord also but actually it is called a vocal fold which has got three layers if you see this diagram it has got an epithelial layer and second layer there there is a small area where it is where it is uh, called the lamina propria then it has got muscles. So this area of lamina propria is otherwise called ring case space. The importance of ring case space is whenever there is allergy or angioedema, especially due to allergic substances or due to drugs, the vocal cord or vocal fold can go into swelling and it can cause difficulty in respiration and patient might die if it is not properly treated. So this ring case space is the area or is the layer where the edema occurs in anaphylaxis or angioedema. The movements of the rima glottidis if you see this is the rima glottidis I told you this is the membranous portion this is the cartilaginous portion and the this is the the shape of the rima glottidis that is this is almost rectangular this is triangular and when a person is breathing very quietly or normally when a person is breathing it looks like a pentagon okay this is a rectangular this is triangular and in full inspiration see in full inspiration what is going to happen it is going to become diamond shaped so this area becomes a diamond and this area becomes triangular so the, the you can see how it is moving so this is in full respiration and again further respiration it can totally separate and it becomes totally triangular and this is the time when you are producing a high pitched voice that is the vocal folds are tensed and entire membranous portion and the cartilaginous portion are very close to each other and this is the area when see the inner cartilaginous space is triangular and the membranous portion are very close and that happens when you are whispering. This is the subglottic area this is the the vocal cord which will fold and this area is called subglottic compartment and there's not, nothing much to explain about this and this is quite fixed compared to the rest of the larynx. The mucosa of the larynx entirely is lined by pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium except at the vocal fold where the epithelium is stratified squamous epithelium for obvious reasons huge lot of uh, wear and tear so the vocal folds are lined by the the stratified squamous epithelium this is to show you the interior of larynx when you see through a laryngoscope okay, you can see that this this is the anterior portion this is the posterior portion you can see this whitish vocal fold and here is the posterior part of the, 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 the uh, 
posterior part of the upper of the vestibule where your arachnoids are located i can see the fold of mucosa going from the arachnoid to the epiglottis this is called array epiglottic fold and see how it is moving this this see this is the movements of the larynx you can see how it is opening this is the epiglottis anteriorly this portion this portion this is the epiglottis and see this is the this is the vocal fold coming to the muscles of the larynx these three diagrams will show you the entire muscles of the larynx i'll explain you you can see this is the arachnoid this is the thyroid cartilage and this is the posterior aspect of the angle of the thyroid cartilage you can see this is the vocal ligament that is the ligamental portion of the vocal fold and this is the rima glottis which i was telling this is the arachnoid and you can see there are two muscles going from the arachnoid anteriorly towards the thyroid cartilage and this muscle which takes origin from the vocal process of the arachnoid and it is going towards the posterior part of the angle of the larynx and also part of the vocal ligament this is called vocalis muscle so vocalis muscle will take origin from the vocal process and it is inserted to the vocal ligament as well as the thyroid cartilage and you can see laterally this is called thyro arachnoid muscle thyro arachnoid muscle which is going from the arachnoid to the thyroid cartilage again laterally you can see one muscle which is going upward this is called thyro epiglottic muscle i'll tell you that later and here one muscle which is going from the arachnoid to the arachnoid that is transverse arachnoid and this is the oblique arachnoid and you can see this one is the array epiglottic muscle which is going from the arachnoid to the epiglottis muscle here is the one more view that is from the posterior view you can see this muscle is the posterior cricoarachnoid that is taking origin from the posterior aspect of the cricoid cartilage going to the muscular process and here you can see this muscle which is going from the posterior aspect of one arachnoid to the posterior aspect of the opposite arachnoid this is called transverse arachnoid and you can see one going from the lower part of the arachnoid to the apex of the opposite arachnoid this is called oblique arachnoid you can see the same happening here also and this oblique arachnoid if you see it is continuous with this muscle this is the array epiglotticus muscle which is located inside the array epiglotticus fold array epiglottic fold so here we have muscles this is the posterior cricoarachnoid this is the transverse arachnoid oblique arachnoid and this is the array epiglotticus muscle this is the muscle which is going from that is central tendon it is called it is going from the cricoid to the esophagus so this is one muscle okay. and here if you see laterally this was the muscle i was telling you before oblique line of the thyroid cartilage you can see this is the the sternohyoid muscle this one cut section this is the thyrohyoid muscle and you can see the dotted line how the inferior constrictor of pharynx will take origin from the thyroid as well as the cricoid and the posterior border of the thyroid cartilage will leave attachment to three muscles the conjoint tendon formed by the stylo pharyngeus the salpingopharynges and the palatopharynges all three will be attached to the posterior border and you can see this is the cricothyroid muscle which has got a vertical portion and a horizontal portion oblique portion you can say the oblique portion both will join together to form and it is inserted to the anterior portion of the cricoid so these are the muscles again to repeat one by one this is vocalis from here to here insertion goes to the thyroid cartilage as well as the vocal ligament this is the thyro epiglotticus this is the lateral thyro cricoarachnoid lateral cricoarachnoid posterior cricoarachnoid transverse arachnoid oblique arachnoid this is the thyro epiglotticus and here is 
the posterior cricoarachnoid cricoarachnoid transverse arachnoid oblique arachnoid and array epiglottic muscle and here cricothyroid muscle cricothyroid the explanation of the muscles are given the muscles of the larynx are classified into intrinsic muscles and extrinsic muscles intrinsic muscles are the one which is going to change the movements of the vocal cords and the cricoid and thyroid thereby it produces variation in the sound and the cricoid will cause tension the posterior cricoarachnoid will abduct the vocal cord and that is why it is called the safety muscle of the tongue because that is the one which is good abduct and make the passage open lateral cricoarachnoid will adduct transverse will adduct oblique will adduct and the thyroarachnoid will relax because when the thyroarachnoid and the vocalis muscle both contract it will it will reduce the distance between the arachnoid and the thyroid cartilage thereby the vocal cord or vocal fold will relax these are the different origins and the actions of the muscles please go through that which i have already explained extrinsic muscles we have depressants and elevators these are the depressants all of you might have already known about this one sternothyroid homohyoid sternohyoid and the inferior cancer all will depress and thyrohyoid digastric muscles stylohyoid the mylohyoid geniohyoid hyoglossus geniogrossus all this will elevate when the hyoid elevates the thyroid also will elevate coming to the nerve supply of the larynx the both the sensory and the motor nerve supply are both derived from the vagus and the superior laryngeal nerve which arises from the vagus will divide into internal and external internal you already know when you have learned about thyroid we have already studied the internal will pierce the thyrohyoid membrane and it will be, it will supply the interior of the larynx above the vocal cord and that is the one which is responsible for cough reflex and the external laryngeal nerve the important relation between the external laryngeal and the superior thyroid artery probably you might have remember otherwise please do recollect and it supplies the cricothyroid muscle and the recurrent laryngeal nerve branch of the vagus you remember the difference between the two recurrent laryngeal see the left one winding around the arch of aorta the right one winding around the right subclavian artery it supplies sensation to the part of the larynx below the vocal fold and it supplies all muscles of the larynx except the cricothyroid arterial supply superior laryngeal artery coming from the superior thyroid artery and the inferior laryngeal artery coming from the inferior thyroid artery and always remember the two important relations neurovascular relations of these two arteries and there is something called pre epiglottic phase this is the pre epiglottic space you can see it is bounded above by the the hyo epiglottic ligament and here we have the we have anteriorly the thyrohyoid membrane and posteriorly you can see the epiglottis this is important because this space is the place initially affected with carcinoma when during the early spread ringe space which i have already told you especially edema of the larynx after during or allergy or angioedema or anaphylaxis this is the applied aspects about larynx we have laryngoscopy direct laryngoscopy or indirect laryngoscopy that will that will be told in detail when you go to ent and the cough reflex which i have told you already that is made by the internal laryngeal nerve laryngitis is one condition which can be either bacterial or excessive use of voice especially in hawkers where the edema of the vocal cord can lead to lead to hoarseness of voice or at times there can be small nodules formed at the junction of the anterior one third and the posterior two third that is the maximum site of vibration in case of making high noise 
that is vocal nodule that also will present with hoarseness and carcinoma larynx is also common nowadays so many reasons especially smoking is one main reason and paralysis of the vocal cords are common following thyroid surgeries and the recurrent laryngeal nerve or external laryngeal nerve both can be affected but a single nerve injury does not going to cause any problems unless otherwise there is slight amount of uh, hoarseness of voice may be present in uh, single nerve injuries in cadaver uh, in in both recurrent laryngeal nerve injuries the 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 vocal fold will go into cadaveric position and that is an a, a, a position between the adduction and the abduction so in both cases there will be no problem with the breathing and that is the laryngeal edema which i have already told you especially in allergy and anaphylaxis at times foreign bodies can go usually it might stay in the larynx or it can go into the trachea and the laryngostomy or tracheostomy what you call is done in emergency cases of either laryngeal edema or foreign bodies or any condition person has difficulty in breathing artificial respiration can be done through the laryngostomy tube done between the the thyroid cartilage and the cricoid cartilage so that is about the larynx and all of you might repeatedly see this a long class and please write down the following answers to the questions name the cartilages of the larynx explain the features of thyroid cartilage second question explain the interior of larynx with the nerve supply sensory nerve supply explain the interior of larynx with sensory nerve supply third question describe the muscles of the larynx intrinsic muscles of the larynx with action and nerve supply last question one word answer what is the reason for difficulty in breathing in person with allergic reaction or angioedema okay thank you